<laughs> Hell is a reality. How dare you go back and without calling on me to say that? How dare you start drifting back as though you don't have a God to call on to help pick you up from Satan? How dare you act like you don't have no power in me? Shut it up! Hell is not an un earned sentence but a lawful condemnation of sinners who deserves the penalty they receive you get what you want God said listen I'll give you what you want I'll give you life or death you choose if you end up in hell because it's what you chose that God didn't choose that for you you chose that you chose it God did the casting Oh y'all, God said I'm gonna cast you into hell after a while. He said you choose to disobey me. You choose to keep walking away from me. You choose. God said you keep running from your calling when you should be preaching, but you running from it. By now you should be preaching. You should be teaching this word, but you've been so busy in your carnality, so busy in your flesh, until you're not walking in the pace that I told you to walk in. That's all right. You're choosing it. I call you preachers to help carry the mantle. Why are you too weak to even pick it up? Too weak to even pick up. Help pick up the mantle on the man of God. You know why? Because you're slipping. And the more you slip, the weaker you get. That's no strength in your prayers. You that's no strength as quiet. That's no strength in the system with the anointing that you can't add to what's in the house. You can't add no fire. You can't add no power because your slipping is making no weak. But God said, Zion, you put on your strength. You better hurry and find that strength. How much time you think you got left to find it? Jude, look at the book of Jude. One chapter now. The book of Jude. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm that devil messing with this camera stuff tonight. That's all right. We're going to get it all. It's going to be out there. I want, I want this to go out. They ain't preaching this stuff out there. Not, 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 not a lot of them is Jude. Verse 6. He said, and the angels which kept not their first estate and or position in heaven, but left their own habitation. He had reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great things. He said, I haven't got angels that fail. I got them changed. And reserved an everlasting change under darkness. They, and they are somewhere in hell right now waiting. And if God got angels changed, And the angels that fail is reserved in the everlasting chains of darkness. What about Christians that backslide and never repent? Hey, God, the word. God. The word. See, let me tell you how you know you're in a bad shape. You know you're in a bad shape. It's when your spirit is uncomfortable when the pastor walk in. When your spirit is uncomfortable, I, I feel you. I'm not crazy. When there's a sense of something ain't right in me. That's a sign you better hurry and get something right. Because if you feel that from the, by the pastor, why did I feel that by God? If the pastor can discern it, what about God? Because the Holy Ghost is what gave it to me. I can feel you when you got no comfort. I can feel you when you're hesitant. I can feel you. You know why you're hesitant? Sin make you a coward. Sin makes you weak. Sin make you draw back. Sin. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Sin will do it. Sin won't make you. Sin will make you timid at the altar. Sin won't make us quiet. Won't be able to pray.
stay comfortable because you conscious of your sin. If I'm telling you conscious of sin, you die like that. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. You better get it right. Because you die. I hear it ticking. But the thing about it, which way is it ticking? Now, counterclockwise, it's going forward. Every day, 12 o'clock in, since I'm getting closer to the grave. 12 a.m., I'm closer to my grave. Oh, 12 o'clock tonight, I get closer. 12 o'clock tomorrow night, I get closer. 12 o'clock, if I make it to Sunday night, I got closer. Every day you wake up, you're getting closer to eternity. Every day you wake up, you might be getting closer to hell. You get closer to hell. You could be getting closer to hell. Which way are you going? Which way? Every day. Every day I'm dying. Every day. This die. This flesh. This body. This get killed. Every day. This flesh is getting ready. My doctor go back to the dust. Every day. This flesh is getting ready to release me. This body is getting ready to release me. And I don't know when, but I don't want this body to release me. See, your body could be your worst enemy. When it decides to release you, you're not ready. Are you in trouble? I don't want your body to release you tonight. Where will you go? Where will you be? Where will you spend eternity? I can't get nobody. I tell the Lord, please, don't release me from this prison. Don't release me from this prison. But buy me here till I get it together. Buy me in this body till I repent and get my soul right. To release you tonight. His body shut down and you you out. Where you going? Where you going? That's okay. You ain't let me tell you this book. If this word don't convict you, you're not sober. You dealing with a big old demon. And this demon wants you to sit there and ignore this. This demon, because he knows I can get you to ignore this, I can get that soul. I can cause you to lose your soul. But I'm trying to tell him for the lady. I'm trying to warn you. There's a head in the game. There's a head of shine. Don't be here to Feel the Holy Ghost in here. Somebody, my God, to know what I'm talking about. I need somebody to know. I don't got much time. I better ride while I got a chance. I gotta ride while I got any action in my body. While I got any strength in my body. While I got my right mind. I better ride while I can talk for myself. I can think for myself. I can't get nobody. But I'm on my deathbed. I can't talk for myself. Somebody gonna be in control. I'm pulling the plug. If I'm on my deathbed, I'm on life support. I'm too subjective to talk. I can't say don't do it. I'm too subjective to say don't pull the plug. I can't talk for myself. I cut I'm on life support. But why you not on life support? Why you can talk? Why you can walk? Tell the Lord, save me. There's some people right now, everlasting, everlasting fire right now. And guess what? There's some people you know. There's some family members you know. There's some friends you know. That's some co-workers you knew. Some of them right there, right now. They right there, right now. They can't come back here. Their body gone. They can't come back. What you do if you woke up at night and you out your body? You walking out your body. See everybody in the house sleep. But you just stepped out. And you try to get back in, but you can't. Because it's deceased. It's not working no more. The machine ain't working. You out of it now. What you gonna do? You know you're dead. Now you know. What you gonna do? You can't get back in. What you gonna do? And you start seeing things you couldn't see in the doctor. What you gonna do? Oh, you start seeing that demon. That demon that led you to the clubs. You gonna see that demon that led you to drugs. You gonna see that demon that led you to the virgin pornography. I can't get nobody. You will see that demon that persuaded you to commit 
lesbian is a homosexuality. What you gonna do when they cry? Your soul down to hell. What you gonna say? What you gonna do? I was like, if I find somebody who left them hands in hell, I talk a lot. I know you gonna play. I know you gonna play. I know you gonna play. Sad. You died tonight. Everybody in the living room, you walk in there and you say, Can y'all see me? Can somebody help me? Nobody know you in that room, you deceased. Nobody know you're gone. But you said, Help me, but nobody can help me because they can't hear you. What you gonna do? Something comes for you. The Bible said, Hell met them at the coming. Hell met you right at the point of death because they knew you was coming. Y'all don't see this. People don't, people don't believe this stuff because they want to be reincarnated. They believe in that reincarnation. That's that's damnable. Anything that can get you not to believe in the hell is going to get you to go to hell. Can I get a witness? How do you know it's a hell? Because there's too many doctors out there to tell me it's not one. What you going to do? You out your body. Nobody can hear you. Help me, brother Trey. Help me, brother Trey. Help me, wife. Why? Help me, wife. If you find yourself going down a dark tunnel, and at the end of the tunnel is fire, down this dark path, and the closer you get to the fire, the more you feel it. You know you're about to be dropped down into hell. Heard about a woman? She was. She was dying, but she fell hell at her feet. Josh, my feet is on fire. My feet is on fire, Daddy. I can't get up. But call on Jesus, I can't call him. Oh, God, I, I remember Bishop, uh, the apostle on TV. He told about a story about a young woman, and this thing really touched me. I shared with y'all. This woman, this girl, she would come to church to a whole of this church. She wanted to be saved. She wanted to be saved bad. The Holy Ghost was convicted her to be saved. But her daddy told her, if you get saved, I'm going to beat you. You better not get saved. I'm going to beat you with some kind of rod or some kind of switch. If you get saved in that whole of this church, I'm going to beat you if you get saved. And she would come to church. She would want to be saved, but she was afraid what her daddy was going to do. And the Bible said, not the Bible, but the story said at one point she got sick or something happened to her. And she would live on a deathbed. She was in her deathbed, and while she was dying, she felt that fire at, his, at her feet. And she said, Daddy, I feel fire at my feet. And she said, and Daddy said, call on the Lord, call on the Lord. He said, but I can't, I can't call on her because you threatened to beat me. If I ever call on her, I can't feel him no more. He's not here no more. I can't get no mother. He's not here because I was afraid of what you're going to do. But the Bible said, be not afraid of a man. That can destroy both bodies. It will destroy your body. But be afraid of him. They can destroy, destroy both body and soul in hell. If I gotta be beat with ashes, I wanna be beat with ashes. Then burn in the flames forever. But I get a witness I, I, I get beat. I'd rather be stabbed. I'd rather be shot than in the flames of hell forever. You reject Jesus on earth. You won't have many eternity. You oh, can't get no help. You reject them on earth. You don't let nobody. I don't care what the threat is. Because after a while, he's going to leave you alone. You keep pressing at your heart. And you won't give it up. After a while, he's going to leave you to your own destruction. Oh, y'all hear me? Oh, y'all hear me? But look at verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember that? And the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going out the strange flesh. You know what that strange flesh is? Homosexuality. They was going out, they were fornicating, and they was giving themselves to strange flesh. Any type of man lay with a man, you lay with strange flesh. It's strange. A man's supposed to be with no man. That's strange. A woman's supposed to lay with no woman. God called that strange 
flesh. And as a result, the Bible says, and set forth an example. He says, Sodom and Gomorrah was an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. He said they got damned to hell because they committed fornication and went out the strange flesh. And God said, let them serve to be an example to you. They went to hell. They went to hell. They suffered eternal vengeance and fire because they would not repent. They get no help, sister, did I? He said, you, if I didn't let them get away with it, I ain't letting you get away with it. So what's more important to you right now? What's more important to your flesh and your desires? Or the soul? Ooh, God, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Lord, it's time to wake up. And it's, it's sad you're going to sleep on something like this. Okay, what's going on? Let me tell you, it's time to wake up. Your soul, your soul, your soul, my soul. I can't get nobody. It's the most valuable thing that I have. You lose it, it's over. It's over. It's over. The question came to my spirit today. Does the punishment of hell fit the crime of rejecting Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? Yes. yes. The punishment lasts longer than the crime. Right? Wow. You might have been sitting for 30 years, but as a result of that 30 years sin, you gotta suffer forever. You might have robbed the store. You did it one time. It only took $30. But you got 30 years. The punishment seems more than the crime. But this is what you call in the spirit divine retribution. Right. Well, it's quiet. I, I just sinned. I, I just committed adultery, but, but God said, but that, that's, that's, that's 10 years of adultery that you didn't repent of. I'm a holy God. I'm a just God. When you offend my holiness, you make me angry. Let me tell you something. Can I tell you how, how much God hates it? What it does to you? Even Jesus said, my God, my God, why have God forsaken me? You know why he forsaken him? Because God saw you and me and my sins on him. He had to reject the son because of sin. So what about us? If he said I felt his presence leave me. What about us if we die in sin? His presence is going to leave you. And you'll be in eternity. Let me tell you, you might have folks around you, but you're going to be by yourself. Because nobody can help you. Ain't no party in hell. My homeboys, let me tell you, they, they, just, they want out more than you going to want out. Oh, it's quiet. I got a push. Oh, what if you go to hell and you see your co-worker? And you say you were saved, you in here with me. Your pastor down there with you. You've been preaching the words, but how you down here with me? Uh oh, let me tell you, I'm going to be mad they pastors in here because the pastor never told them what to do to get out of them. All he preached to me was houses and cars and money, but he never told me how to escape the flames. Y'all cried on me. Hell is a reality, boy. This is a tough one tonight. I, I hope I can get all this out there because somebody got to hear this. Somebody, somebody in this house got to hear this because you could be in danger. Of hellfire. Ooh, I hear God talking to you so loud for this. Can you hear that? Can you hear the voice of God? Somebody, you better step out of it, said the Lord. Snap out of who bewitched you. But you should not obey the truth. Who bewitched you? Who has cried on you? Does the punishment fit the crime? Yes. Yes. Because the wages for offending the holiness of God is death. That's the payment. See so what you're saying is good for you? Sins only give you pleasure for the moment. But at the end of it all, you lose your soul. Watch this. An average, hear this word. An average of 65 million people die each year in the world. That is 
178,000 each day. It could be one of us. 700, 7,425 each hour. 7,425 people die an hour. 65 million people die each year in the world. Every second, 1.91 million humans die. And out of all them people dying, who made it in? Isaiah 65. I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 5. Y'all, y'all, don't get depressed. This should, this should push you. I could have been one of these millions. Hey, I could have been one of these thousands. I could have been, I could have been one of these billions. Of millions. Could have been us today, but so when all these deaths are occurring every day, what's going on in the, in the spiritual realm? Are y'all hearing me? What's happening in the spirit realm when people die and ain't saved? Okay, I'm going to show you what's happening. Isaiah chapter 5, four, verse 14. Therefore, hell has enlarged itself. That's what's happening. All these millions of people dying each second and every hour and every year. And a lot of folks ain't saved. They filling hell up. And you know what's so sad about it? Some of these folks was people that were saved. Some of these folks that's filling up hell are backsliders. Y'all quiet on me. You better put the brakes on your flesh. Because the grass is not greener on the other side. Who is quiet? If losing a car or a house or a job get you off course, you ain't ready to go to heaven. Because he said, do much tribulation, do much suffering. We enter to the kingdom of God. You letting this stuff make you backslide. You better hurry to get yourself. Because I just read of all these millions dying every hour, every year, every second. And most of these souls is filling up hell. Hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. It's taking in souls every second. Right now, somebody just died and went there. Right, right now. Somebody wasn't looking for it. Come on, man. They got up as normal, so then there's another normal day. I'm going to do my mischievousness. I'm coming back home when I get done. They realized that was the last chance. That was the last club they went to. That was the last sex opportunity. That was the last. Oh, oh God. That was the last drug they smoked. They wouldn't think that was going to be the last one. But they smoked that last one and they took them out and they, they sold. Ended up in hell. They thought they were going to go as normal and come back home that normal, but they realized that last hit, that last drink, was the last one that took them down. And down that was so to hell. That last sex abuse. That last video you watched with them naked folks on it. You didn't realize that was your last video. You didn't realize You didn't realize it. That was your last late night stand. A lot of them died. Didn't realize that was that last time. And that's the word, thou fool. Tonight your soul is going to be quiet in Didn't realize tonight was the night that God called your soul into accountability. You know what we do when we play a scene? You take a gun with one bullet in that chamber, put it to your head, How? take the gun back, spin it, put it to your head, and that wasn't the chamber. But see, after a while, has a bullet in the chamber. It's gonna come up after a while. I'm telling you, tell you sin got a bullet in it. It's in the chamber. After a while, that last time could be your last time. Are y'all with me here? Killed yourself with drugs. Boy, it's quiet. 
And you can tell you something. Stop putting folks in heaven if they if they died in the drug right, house. They didn't go to heaven. They died from drugs. Let's just be real about it. Come on. They died in all of those. They killed themselves. That's suicide. Besides, you kept doing this and God, you know he ain't pleased with it. The last time could be the last time. Your last time. The last time of saying God forgive me could be the last time. You might not even say forgive me, they even get it out no more. So you said God forgive me, keep doing it. God forgive me, keep doing it. This time you're going to do it, you might not have no breath to even say nothing. You know people die like that? They die with the intent of saying God forgive me after I'm done. And the intention and the, and the, and the plan never came to pass. Y'all, this is serious word. Hey, I, I feel somebody's soul is in trouble. The Lord said, listen to me. If you don't feel it, stop acting like you do. Right. All this loud jumping and screaming, loud tongues. If you ain't feeling that, I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I think I need to rebuke you before you go to hell behind it. Wow. If it ain't, let me tell you, if you're struggling and you're trying to speak in tongues, it's not sounding right. Because somebody got the Holy Ghost can't deserve. Them ain't real tongues. That's a struggle coming out your voice cloud. It ain't coming out your belly. It's loud. It's obnoxious. It ain't right because you ain't right with God. Let me tell you, cry at this altar. I can't get up. Why are you shouting and you ain't delivered? How are you speaking in tongues and you're still struggling? How? Where that power, where that shout coming from? Where them tongues coming from? Hell is a reality. Hell is a reality. Now, I was down praying. I heard a word in my spirit. I'm going to end with this word. I was down praying first name. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me, when I heard the Holy Ghost say, when I decide that it's time to cast the soul in the hill, there's no man or woman can restrain my hand from doing so. Once I decide to separate a soul from my presence for all eternity, there's nothing that can prevent it, can prevent it from happening. The Lord said a lot of people that thought that hell was just a figment of the imagination is now living in the reality of the torments of the flesh. It's just a state of mind. It's just a state of mind. Now they realize it wasn't just a state of mind. It was a state of a place. And he went on to tell me, he said, there are people, hear this word, I want y'all to hear me. The Lord said, there are people hearing my voice in their spirit calling them with an urgent call to repent the lord said to me they can hear the urgency in my voice calling them to repentance but they're giving my voice a deaf ear by rejecting my call to come to jesus the lord said pray for them that they will repent because after i decide to pull the plug of mercy you guys hear that? I heard it like the Lord said, after I decide to pull the plug of mercy, all they will remember in hell is all the times they heard me tell them to repent over and over again. Watch this. The Lord said, my presence won't be there. So I'm not there to talk to them. But all they got is a memory of my voice. The memory of my voice is echoing. It's going to echo them. All the times I say repent, they're going to hear it. Over and over. Because I pulled the plug of mercy. Right now, you're giving us mercy. You keep letting you get by. You don't have to. You could have killed you the first time. He didn't have to. He give mercy to whom he will. He, he do what he wants. But after a while, he said, I'm going to pull the plug. Because I know you hear my voice. The Lord said to me, I'm speaking to some people in an urgent voice. He said, it's not, a, it's not it's like a, 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 a voice where it's just come and then it come. But God said, it's an urgent voice. And I'm calling them to repent. But they're giving me a devil. Rejecting me. 
do the Lord just said, I'm trying to save your soul from an eternity in hell. If you would just hear my voice. Oh God. You don't need your Bible from this now. Come on, man. You need to speak to me. Come on. You know what I heard the Lord say to me? There will be a more severe and harsh punishment in eternity for those who know the plan of salvation and won't accept it. I'm going to show you. He's going to back this up with scripture. Look at St. Luke chapter 12. Ooh, Lord. He says a more severe punishment for those that know the way of salvation and won't accept it. You won't receive it. You won't embrace it. The Lord says more severe punishment for you because you know better. He said opposed to those that don't know as much as you know. Right, right. Oh, y'all hear me? Look at Luke 12 and verse 47 and verse 48. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. Did you hear that? He knew the will, but didn't prepare himself to do it. He said because he knew too much. And didn't do it. His judgment going to be worse. Verse 48 said. But he that knew not. And didn't, didn't know the master's will. And did commit things where their stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. They didn't know as much as you did. But they still about to suffer for it. God says some of y'all know too much. Why head into eternity with this knowledge of salvation. And not accept it and receive it. Then a word, another word came to me more heavier than this. Then the Lord said to me, but the worst punishment in hell will be on those that experience salvation in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then turn their backs on God. You've been saved. You've tasted the heavenly gift. Come on, Pastor. You spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave you utterance. You were baptized in His name. You you know what it's like to live saved when you turned your back on God. He said you got the worst punishment. Hey, hey, Hebrews chapter six. This is so. This is going to sober you up because I'm yeah. telling you, some of y'all on, on, on. I'm telling you, I heard I heard the Lord tell me some of y'all is on that on that on that line. You playing? Come on. I'm telling you, you why, why you why you why you tossing back and forth when you when you know better? Oh, Hebrews chapter six, uh -huh. verse four said, "For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly guilt and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come." If they shall fall away, they will fall away. Fall away me. They, they apostatize. They walk away from after all God done for you. After all this heavenly gifts and, and heavenly experience, you walk away from God. He said to renew them again under repentance. In other words, he said some people are too far out to come back. You played too long. You better pray today. If you play with God that you ain't in that place where there's a lock on you. There's a lock on the new one. He said, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. He said, you died like this. He said, you put him crucified in my flesh and you put him to an open shame and you die like that, your punishment is worse. You know too much. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, hey, no, I'm, really, I'm lying. I ain't sorry. Hey. No, I said the people got to get shaken up again. Hey. I don't know what you're playing. I don't, I don't know what, who, what, what giving you the excuse to play in sin. What, what's giving you the excuse to be weak? What excuse do you have? God said, I'm not giving it to you. I'm not giving you no excuse. I'm calling you to wake up before you die in your sins. He said to me, there are souls in hell. I heard this in my spirit. So like the Lord said to me, there are souls in hell screaming for God uh -huh. to put them back in that body they used to rebel against the man. Ah. Ah. Because they want to come back and repent because of the flames. Uh -huh. But watch this. But in their minds, they know. 
and can't come back. Watch this. That's what he told me. Because that body they lived in had reached its appointed time. And there's no coming back. That body reached the appointed time of life. And once that body reached that appointed time, it's gone. Now you left out. You can't get back in that body no more. That body's in the dust waiting for resurrection now. To stand before God to be judged. They screaming, God, please. Let me go back. I'll do it right this time. God, let me go back. And guess what? God ain't hear him. He said, my hands are not short that they cannot save. My ears are not heavy that they cannot hear. But if you're in hell, he said, I'll, I'll bless the show. They crying right now, please. And this folks angry with God because they won't get them out. They're angry. They gnash the teeth. They angry because God won't get them out of here. But God said, you chose this. This is what you voted. You came to church every Sunday and never really saw deliverance. You on the long dresses and, and the long hair like you were sanctified, but you really were. You came around the brother like you were saved and sanctified, but you had so much jump in your spirit and in your flesh. He said, you chose this. You chose not to repent. You chose to play with sin. You chose to play with nudity. You chose to play with this. And this is what you got what you wanted. Y'all better hear this. I don't, I don't understand how you can fall asleep on this. We don't fall asleep on food. We don't fall asleep on games. We don't fall asleep on entertainment. But when it comes to a word like this, we daydream. My mind's off the word. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. It don't change the fact that hell is a reality. It's teenagers in hell right now wish they had their mama to help them again. These they rebelled against their mama. Talk crazy to them there in hell. Mama ain't there for you now. Mama ain't there to help you now. Daddy ain't there to help you. You want your own now? You want to be on your own when you was at home now? God said you're on your own now. And you grown now. You, let, me see how, let me see how grown you are. You grown up to face, to face these flames. You that tough. Let me tell you, God's going to show you I'm God after a while. I'm going to get my way. Lord, how much time do we think we got? See, let me tell you, sin will make you feel invincible. Like, man, I ain't get caught the last time. I keep doing it over and over. I keep getting out. I keep getting off. But after a while, see, after, see it's a scripture in the Bible says men hard and set to do evil because they didn't get caught. And so they keep doing it and keep doing it and they feel like they ain't going to get caught. But after a while, sentences is coming. And you know, even after all this kind of preaching, you better tell it. Their heart is still hard. You better tell it. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of a son of man. Noah sitting here building this ark. Building this ark, getting ready for the rain. They sitting there laughing at Noah. Look at this crazy man building a boat. We never seen no rain before. Let's keep married. Let's keep giving in the marriage. Let's keep living like we want to live. There ain't nothing gonna happen. Jesus ain't coming. Keep talking about he's coming. Ain't nothing happened yet. The father fell asleep. Ain't they, everything remained the same. Keep talking about you. Keep laughing at us. And it's sad some people have to die right now. I'm talking, they just died. Over there, I saw with Alice that that preacher wasn't lying to me. I kept coming to church. Grandma wasn't lying to me. Mama kept warning me. And I got tired of daddy telling me what he, but I wish daddy would tell me again. I wish I would have listened too late. You got all eternity to think about. Think of, do you understand the concept of eternity? This time is taken out of me. Can I tell you how long hell is? Hell is going to exist as long as God is around. And that's the end. The Bible said God's everlasting, right? The Bible said the flavor is everlasting. It's unquenchable. So hell's going to be here as long as God is here. And that's not, that ain't, ain't even that. That's not going to change at all. God don't change. So how is hell going to change? It's no end. It's, you continually falling down. No future. You got no future. Nothing to look forward to. All you got is the past. It's a memory of what your life was. But nothing to look forward to. But torment. You gotta look, you know what you're looking forward to? To another thousand years. 
another thousand years of eternal torment as a result of rejecting the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And then you got idiots talking about that's number of scar tactics to get people to go. No, this is a warning tactic. It's in the Bible to warn us. I asked one of the verses to go to. Hell is in the center of the earth. The Bible said just like Jonah was swallowed up in the belly of the well for three days and three nights. So shall the son of man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. The Bible said God swallowed core of men the earth opened up and pulled them down to the pit. They went straight to hell from earth. The Bible said the Lord, after he rose from the dead, after he died, he descended to the lower parts of the earth. Where he got the keys of death and hell. That's where he preached to the spirits that found in prison. His soul didn't see, his body didn't see corruption, neither was his soul left in hell. He went down to the heart of the Hey, it's real, man. And we want to play. Because after a while, every, think about it. I want you to hear this sober up real quick. Every one of us. Stand before God. Nobody's going to escape. Oh, y'all listen to me back then. Y'all heard? Everybody is going to have to answer to God. When I think about that for myself, you know what that tells me? I can't run from this. Ain't no way around it. No escape. I can't, it's not, I can't hide the closet from God. What you gonna say when you see him? And he gonna ask you, why didn't you receive my son? Why didn't you why didn't you yield to me when I was calling you? The Bible says he's gonna judge us according to this gospel. So everything he said in here, he's gonna judge us by it. That's why he said they didn't obey not the gospel of Christ. Flame and vengeance to take flame and fire and vengeance on them because they obey not the gospel of Christ. He gonna judge us according to this book. Oh God! And if our lives is not lined up with the book, so cold The book gonna condemn you. Right? Y'all quiet on me. You didn't love your neighbor, right? So testify against you. You walked in grudges. When he told you to let it go and forgive, he gonna judge your body. Yes, sir. I suggest that you run and get that junk out your heart tonight. Whether they will receive it or not, you want to get this out. Listen, I, listen. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get things right with people that I, that's offended with me, and I don't know why. I'm trying to find out what's going on. What did I do? Let's get it right. I don't want my soul lost because some bitter, some resentment or anger I have towards you. You're going to lose your soul like that. Let's talk about it. Let's let it out there. Let's, let's put the devil under our feet and let's go to heaven. Because one of us ain't going with grudges and it ain't going to be me. I'm not going to hold it. Y'all quiet on me here. You, you mean to tell me we, we say, folks, we can't talk to nobody because they made us mad? Yeah. Right. Who are you? My God, I can't hear nobody here. Get that junk out your heart. Let go of this stuff. I can't get no help in that Amen. 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 Hell is a reality. And we, if you ain't saved, you're one breath away from it. You're just one breath. Once you take that, that breath in your body, go back to God. But your soul comes out. The breath that God gave you, go back to it. Bible speaks about the breath goes back to God. The breath, your breath, <gasps> goes back to the one that gave him. But your soul goes to the place where you chose to go to. Y'all quiet today. I wonder what happens to a Christian that got the Holy Ghost sister under him and they backslid him. And Think about five minutes before they die. Where the Holy Ghost go? Wow. Wait a minute. 
Do the Holy Ghost depart before you come out? Oh, you know you have them. You receive the Holy Ghost for real, but you play. Oh, you are the moment of death. Do the Holy Ghost stay there with you until you cross over? Or do he know you gone? I gotta go. That's why some people don't have a mind to think no more. Holy Ghost leave. They, they can't even pray. He said the Holy Ghost will bring all things back to your memory. Some people are down there deathbed they can't remember nothing. They pray, but quiet. You know what the Lord said I do? I take your mouth before I take your body. Because if you got enough mind, you can repent. But if I'm done with you, I don't want you to repent at all. If I have decided to damn your soul, I'm going to take your mind away from you where you will have no chance to talk to me. You better repent while you got a mind. Boy, I can't get no help in there. God said, I on purpose take their reason. And I'm on purpose take their voice. I on purpose take their speech. Because I don't want them talking to me. Because my mind is made up already. There ain't nothing else to be said. Because you had every opportunity to talk to me when you were walking, running around and doing your thing. There's some people die of miserable deaths. Miserable death. They die of miserable deaths. Because they wouldn't listen. So God said, I'm gonna mock you. You mock me, I'm gonna mock you in the day of your in the day of your, your issues. Yep. In the day of you going through your calamity, I'm gonna mock you. Whoa. I keep telling you, come to me, and you won't come. I keep telling you, get saved, you won't get saved. And the moment you need me to save your life, Lord save me, he's gonna mock you. Lord save me. It's gonna be too late. Help me, Lord. He's gonna tell you, Lord, help me. You know what he's trying to tell you? I'm done with you. Yeah. Ah. Because you went into your deathbed to repent. And I didn't promise you that. I didn't promise you I'm going to let you be. I'm going to give you mercy on your deathbed. I didn't promise you that. I promised you mercy while you were walking around. I promised you mercy when you were able to remember now of your creator. In the days of your youth. But now here it is. Your mind gone. You can't. Boy, it's quiet. Lord, it's... Some people died like that. They couldn't talk. They couldn't think. God said I was done with them. Oh, it's quiet. Next thing they know, they woke up in eternity. Unconscious on this earth. Don't know what's going on. Wow. And when that body died, everything came back. Because your mind don't die. The brain diseases when you die. But the body doesn't. But the mind doesn't. Your mind go with you when you leave her. The brain contains the mind. You, the spirit, got the mind. You, a spirit being with a mind. The brain controls the body. The, the, the mind controls the being. You make the decision in your mind. I can't get no help there, Lord. My brain helps my body move in certain signals. And that's a part of the brain where the mind is. And when you die, your mind go with you. Watch this. It wouldn't be fair my mind don't go with me when I die. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what I'm going to hell for. That's right. I wouldn't know why I'm being judged like this. But my conscience is going to convict me. And it's going to say, yes, Lord, you're right. Y'all quiet on me. If I didn't have no mind, I wouldn't know why I'm in hell. I wouldn't know why I'm here. I wouldn't be, oh, I'm, but you know why? Because you're mad. And your mind's more gonna be more clear than ever been before. Right, right. You're in the spirit realm now. Your senses is higher. Notice when you step out the body, you see what you didn't see in the body. See, right now you can't see hell because you're in your body. That's why folks don't believe because they can't see it. It's only for the soul. And see, hell is not the worst of it though. Hell is a waiting place. Right. Hell is a waiting place. Your soul gonna wait until your body get resurrected. And once that body may be in the sea, you're gonna pull it up. It might be scattered, ashes scattered in the ocean, on the sea. On, on the ocean. Oh. It might be scattered in the sand everywhere. Right. You gotta stop bringing it back together. You can't run from me. You might be chopped up in a thousand pieces. Wow. I'm gonna put you back. I made you I can put it back together. He's going to take that body. The Bible says some shall rise to everlasting uh, 
uh, uh, eternal joy. In other words, a social rising everlasting contempt. You're going to rise and your body going to come back to your, your soul going to come back to your body and you're going to stand before God on that great white throne judgment. I saw the dead both small and great stand before God. Going to have to answer to it. And the Bible said, death in hell, you're going to better die below, death in hell was swallowed up in the lake of fire, which is the second death. And you'll never be able to get out of that. There's nobody. Let me tell you, the the fire is in the lake of fire. Not been tested yet. Nobody's done yet. It's not. It's not tried yet. They're in hell right now, and God gonna take the whole hell and cast it straight in the lake of fire. That's it. So people in hell right now, they feel the flames. They see the, they feel the absence of God's presence. But in their nor, I gotta see God. They know I got to see God to be judged. And if this is bad now. I know it's going to get worse from here. The penalty. For rejecting, I feel the order. Come on, man, God. The word of God. It's great. It's great. It's great. Ah. All we have to do is just say yes. 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 Say, God, I'll serve you the rest of my life. Right. See, with this word, you got to take it for what it says. Right. You can't add, you can't take away from it. You got to leave it like it is. Because if you do, your soul is lost. You can't add to this and say, God said I can do something. Easy. You can't do it. Holiness. I'm, I'm not alone. Holiness. Without which. No man. No man. That's scary. It is scary. She'll see the Lord. Without holiness. With, without a life of holiness. I don't care if you got saved, you spoke in tongues, you can be, if you're not living right, I'll be guessing. He's going to say, depart from me. And so where do you go when he said depart? You got to go somewhere. When he said depart from me, you woke up iniquity. Where are you going? You got to go somewhere. So right now, you know what's scary? Another scary thing in science. Can I tell you something that's scary? The all-knowing God. Know who's gonna make it or not in this That's room. what it is. Yep. He already know. You already know who's gonna end up in hell. You already know who's gonna end up with him. Already know it. You already know it. That's no joke. It's quiet. Come on. See, I understand how you can sit here with no emotion. Hey, sit man, there right. there. You, 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 something wrong with hey, you. Man. Already oh, no. knows who have not given up their witchcraft. He already know who have not given up their uh, their abominations, and he already know who's not gonna give it up. He already knows who's not gonna give up lying, fornicate, adultery. He knows he's gonna give up their a uh, 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 whole moment. He already know. So God, I can come right now. I'm not, the judgment is already set. The judgment, the judgment is already set. It's already set. Remember, I preached it over there. Of the revival. It's already <sighs> So how do you feel about that? That's why the Lord knows if certain people can't backslide because he know if you keep doing this, it's gonna mess your it's gonna focus your change. See, some of us, let me tell you something. And, and it might seem unfair, but some people backslide, God kill them right away. Yeah. Why? Because he's showing mercy who he will. Some people backslide. God said, I'm done with you right now. Boom. Because you'll never be the same again. You'll never recover from this. Shoot you out. Wow. Some people playing with this. And some people, God giving you a chance to get this thing right. 
Amen. After a certain amount of time, God said, you know what? He's going he to make save his, his servant. Go get him. He's going to call that death angel. Take him. And now they playing with me. They you know what they playing with? Not their blood, but mine. Because the blood was shed to the living. Ah. It was shed to save you, to forgive you. But you rejected that. I said after a while, and then some people gotta save him and kill him right away. Ah, because he know if if I don't, they will make it. <laughs> some people gotta put sickness on him because he know that that's what's gonna keep him safe. It's the destruction of the flesh for the saving of the soul. And some people God got sickness on him. I don't care how you pray for him. That's why I learned something. Sorry, ready? If God got destruction on somebody's flesh for the saving of that soul, I bet not try to touch him. Because I'm praying for them to be delivered, I'm fighting against God. And what's on them could come on me. Y'all see, that's some deep stuff. Y'all see, I got some things on some people. I had to allow that car wreck to paralyze them. Because they keep their feet from running to the places. I had to allow the car wreck to take their legs and walk in. Have to allow that counsel to get on them. Y'all see, people don't believe God can do that yes, stuff. But God do make you sick. He can make he can't make you sick and he can't kill you. Because he said in the Corinthians, for this cause many are weak and sickly and even dead or, or, or asleep. Because they didn't they didn't recognize it. They took the, the, the lost suffer unworthily. God said, I can destroy your flesh for the saving of your soul. I can do what I want to do. Absolutely. Each person case is different. God told me I'll kill you if you walk away from me. Y'all quiet. He said I would, he told me I would kill you. You just throw this away if you want to. You won't make it a day. Don't think God won't kill you. Because folks don't think God will do it. Let me tell you something. I'm, 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 I'm trying to get done, but I'm hearing God tell you. God was ready to tell He was telling Moses, get ready. Go speak to Pharaoh to let my people go. But in the process, God was about to kill Moses. Because he didn't circumcise his son. God was going to kill him before the mission he was going to take him out. Because he didn't obey God. Don't think because you got a prophecy over your life you can live in disobedience. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Prophesy this is gonna have to happen, but your disobedience is gonna kill you before it happens. Y'all quiet. Some things you never you would never see come to pass. Y'all quiet on I'm trying to see. I'm trying to tell you. As sure as I speak and stand here, hell is a reality. I was growing up. I was taught there wasn't no hell for years and years and years that was planted in my spirit for years. I was taught that you don't believe there's a hell. There's no such thing as a hell. But when God said that, he opened my eyes to the reality of hell. And there's people dying right now not believing in hell. Tonight, if this blood running through you, if your blood is running warm in your veins and he's convicting you, I would not stay there in that seat. I feel y'all. When I walk in this building, I can feel weakness from so much. I can feel you. And you mean to tell me your soul is worth that imagination? Let me tell you what the devil is doing. There's some folks ain't saying it right now. He's got an imagination on you. He got you stuck with a thought. You better come on with that. A thought of whatever it is. That's a strong one. And he got you sitting with a thought. The Lord said to test me, don't you leave. I ain't just going to church either. You better not leave where God placed you. I'm telling you, the enemy, Sister Lenny, I'm telling y'all. I can tell you what I hear in my spirit. God said the enemy have death traps. And these death traps are called premature deaths. He want to take some folks out before that time. I'm telling you, you keep going to the wrong place, doing the wrong thing, that's a premature death trap now. Y'all hear me here? Have you ever saw somebody die and you just knew they, they died before their time? 
you know that it is not something in your spirit like I know they should have to have been longer than this. You know why they said sin cut them off. Sin will cut you off. Y'all better hear me. I, I know I'm, I'm getting on your nerves tonight, but, 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 but I, I, I just feel lately I've been feeling a strong burden in my spirit because something is off with some people. Come on, you're right about it. And that spirit trying to take you out of here. You right. Please don't die in your sins. Tonight gotta be the night where you saying, God, I'm coming all the way back. It ain't nothing worth me losing nothing. my soul. Come on. Nobody. No thing, no body, no place. No man, no woman. Worth me losing my soul. I don't know if folks say you're going to bust hell wide open. I understand what they say because hell is large yourself and open a mouth without measure. Every time my soul goes down, it gets bigger. The jaws of hell gets bigger. See, I, I I don't take everybody's story about going to hell. I, I stick with this. Right, right, right. Everybody going to heaven and everybody going to heaven and come back and tell the story. Everybody lying. Some, some folks lying. Give me the book. I'm gonna stick with this. Now, I ain't saying your story is credible. I ain't saying you know. But but I, I'm sticking with this. Everybody everybody got vision now. I don't know. I I saw Jesus. He told me. Okay. But you stick with the Bible. I stick with the rich man, Lazarus. Lazarus. Can I get a witness? There's too many people want to know about the devil. It was on the other side. You ain't living right on this side. <laughs> I don't know what's on the other side, but you, 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 you ain't ready to cross over there yet. I can't get no devil up in there, Lord. You better lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you up in there. Be surprised who's still practicing magic and witchcraft and sorcery, and they still go to church. I repent tonight. The doors are open. Thank y'all for watching. God bless y'all. Jesus, these doors are open.